Hello, welcome everybody. Today we are in Decker Warmont and I'm going to give you 14 tips for when you are playing absolutely shit. Tip number one is take more time in between the points because if you're not playing well, you have 20 seconds before each point starts. So if you just lose the point and you go straight away to the next point, you're gonna lose the second point as well. Also, you have to take care of the momentum. So if your opponent is playing very well and you're playing the point after straight away, they are playing better and better and better because they're gonna get this good feeling like, hey, yay, I'm winning, I'm winning. If they played a wonderful smash, a Super Bowl, just take the third ball somewhere, talk with your partner about the plan, take some time, relax, take a 10, then play the next point. So every time they are winning, slow down. Every time you are winning, play the second point quite fast. Tip number two, the helicopter view. If you're losing, you have to know why you are losing. So you have to like physically step out of your body and do like the helicopter view, like boom, 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 boom. what is happening? Why are we losing the match? And you have to ask yourself the following questions, like am I nervous or is my partner nervous? Are we playing the right tactic? Um, am I focused? Am I here on the court? Because if you know why you're losing the match, you can change something. Because if you are losing, you have to change something. If you're winning, you should never change something. So I just listened to a video of Johan Cruyff. Everybody knows Johan Cruyff. If you don't know Johan Cruyff, you have to comment on this video, by the way, because what the hell? So if you're losing, you have to talk. If you're winning, you have to play. So if you're losing, you and your partner need to find out why you are losing, because then you can change something. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you're missing too many lobs. Maybe you're playing on the wrong, on the wrong player. So if you find that out, you can change and you can win. Also, if you have the game switch, so it's 2-1, uh, 2-3, whatever, take some time with your partner and then make a list or visualize, ask what your opponents did when they were losing the points. So say, okay, what is the worst shot of the guy on the left? Okay, his back end, okay. What is the worst shot of the guy on the right side? His bandeja, okay, easy. When we are at the net, we play to his back end. When we are at the back, we play high over the guy on the right. We have a plan. If you're losing, always change the plan. You can also say this to your partner, because if your partner is not, if you recognize the fact that your partner is playing absolutely terrible, don't talk about, oh, I'm sorry, now it's gonna be all right. Just say, okay, shit point, absolutely terrible. My mother's gonna cry. But anyway, what is the worst shot of the guy over there? And then his mind, it's gonna go over there. So if you ask a question to your partner, hey, what have you seen in the warm up? What is his worst shot? Hey, what did you see in the last point? Why did you win the last point? Yeah, because uh, I played a softer shot. <laughs> hey, let's do that again. Tip number three, don't look for the moment. This is what a lot of players do when they are losing. They're playing shit, they're playing terrible, they are crying inside, they are visualizing them, smashing their racket into the glass or something else. So if, if you have that, you want to sometimes look for a moment, like for a kick smash, like I'm playing super terrible, and okay, I'm gonna play for the kick smash, if I hit it, I'm back in the game. It's not like this. It's not like this. If you play terrible, we have to make a rule that you can never ever make three mistakes in one single game, not more. So after you made one mistake in your point, don't look for the moment, let your opponent make the mistake for the next ball. You can never play the winner after, after you made a mistake. If you made a winner, you can make another winner. But if you made a, uh, a non-first error, you cannot go for the winner for the second time. If it's super easy, yes. But this is what you have to calculate and say to your partner like, okay. Because also if you are playing not so well, you need more time to get back into the game. So maybe you need to play some longer points to get rhythm, if that makes sense. Because if they are winning easy points because you are making mistakes, they can play better and better and better and better and they just don't need it. Tip number four, don't think about your technique. This is what a lot of players do. Uh, I have it, 
after I made a mistake, I'm analyzing my technique. I can feel where it's going wrong. After I did like a, a session with a trainer, I can never play a match after because my mind is like twisted. My, my brains are spaghetti in each other. Uh, this is not functioning anymore because I'm thinking about my technique. So if you feel like you are thinking about, oh, I don't hit the ball correctly or eh, very strange. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing such strange lobs? Um, you have to go out of yourself and think about the plan. So if you see your partner after missing the ball, like, no, you have to do this. Avoid that. Try to think about where are you going to play the ball? How are you going to play? Should we play more lobs? Should we play to the guy on the right? Should we play on the guy on the left? And then you have a tactic and then you're going to get back into the match. Tip number five, play more margin. So if you're losing, you want to make less mistakes. You want to keep the ready going because you want to get back into the game. So play more margin. So play higher over the net, play softer shots and play more cross courts. Because if you play cross courts, the angle is longer. If you play higher over the net, you will not hit the net. Maybe you play out, but then you have to play slower and everything is solved. Tip number six is leave the court after the set. So I had this before. I was playing tennis. I had to play against a guy I played these tennis level. This guy only played tennis for six months. Uh, he was be kicking my ass. He had zero technique. He was coming from table tennis. So he had the ugliest technique that I've ever seen. He was wearing a Juventus shirt instead of a tennis shirt. And I was losing 6-1 in the first set, which is insane because I played tennis my entire life and this guy just for six months and I was losing. So what I did is I went to the bathroom. I looked into the mirror. I said, Sven, what the hell are you doing? And I splashed some water into my face. I put on a new t-shirt. I came back into the court, reborn as Sven, the guy that's gonna kick his ass. And I came back and I won the match 6-1, 6-0 in the second and the third set. So sometimes you have to leave the court because in the first set, after you lose it, you can go off the court. You're allowed to do that. So go off the court, forget about everything and then get back into the game because if you just lost a set, even though it's like 6-0 and you're, you're not really changing, take that time, go off the court and then come back in because you need to reset the brain and you need to come back. So sometimes I just took a, a different racket. Let's say I have two of those. I take the other one. I take a new t-shirt or a new outfit, splash in water, towel. Take more time, come back and win the game. Tip number seven is smile, make a joke. So if you are nervous, uh, which is super normal, uh, which everybody has. You need to accept the fact that you're nervous and that it's totally fine. But you need to also to know that you might play a little bit better if you can get rid of the nerves. So I once was coaching one of my best friends. He was totally stressed and we were playing next to a hockey field. And I said, amigo, have you seen number 17 of the hockey field? She looks really good. And then he was like, who? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, she looks good. I said, okay, are you gonna win the game? So he had to laugh. We were joking. I have multiple more offensive jokes that I normally make, but I might get canceled. So I take it like this, but make a joke. Okay, so uh, a German guy, a Mexican guy, and a Spanish guy walk into a bar. Laugh, get back into the game, because also paddle is fun. You need to enjoy the time you have on the court. Don't make it too serious. There are way worse things than losing a paddle match in your life. Tip number eight, play the game so your best player gets the ball. So most of the time, at least one of you is slightly playing better than the other one. Let's say I play on the left and I'm playing better. I'm gonna play to the guy on the left so I get the ball back. Um, if we play to the right player because maybe their right player is worse, it's okay, but then all the balls are going to my partner. Uh, last week I was playing a fip horn with Cameron. The play on the right was worse than the play on the left. But Cameron uh, had the sun in his vision because he was a left-handed player. He still is, by the way. And then I could take more of the ball over there. So what they were doing is they played all the lobs to him when we were playing on this side of the court. So I said, okay, let's play more to the player on the left. So if he lobs the ball, 
I can get it. So this is a way this was, we were playing quite similar with our level. So if you can do this, you can change the game, but also depending on you and not on your opponent. So if I'm playing better, we're gonna play to the play on the left. If Cameron is playing better than me and he's playing on the right, we're going to play more to the player on the right so he gets the ball. Tip number nine is celebrate the point. A lot of players are very negative to themselves, which is not good. And when they make a nice point, it's like, oh, finally I make a good point. No, you have to, come on, yes, come on. Benga. Benga. You have to do a high five, a box. You have to celebrate the point. You, get, you need that positive feeling back into the game. So if I am nervous or if I make a nice point and I need it, I'm gonna scream vamos as loud as I, as I possibly can because I want to feel winning in my veins. So this is so important that you're uh, uh, neutral or positive because then you can get to that other level. And if you're losing, you have to go for the vamos. You have to go vamos. Otherwise you're not a real subscriber of the channel as well. We cannot have that. Tip number 10 is avoid negative visualization. So they did a test once with people that were thinking about the, the exercise, visualizing what they did with basketball players, and one group was actual training. And they figured out that it's the same, uh, the training is just as good. So if you visualize it, you're just as, the, the level of the training is the same level. So after you made a mistake, a lot of times what happens is that you're negatively visualizing the movement. So you see yourself failing after you did, a f after you failed. You don't need that. So after you made a mistake, you have to start making a, a different visualization. You have to see yourself playing the correct shot. You have to see yourself playing to the correct angle with the correct speed. You don't have to visualize yourself winning because that's a mistake, you have to visualize the correct shot you have to take over and over again. You have to visualize yourself as a good mover on the court. That's a bonus tip. Be more active than your opponent because if you're playing shit, you have to work harder than your opponent. 11, don't play the score, play the game. A lot of players, they play their shots, their shot selection based on the score of the game. So if they're winning 40-0, they're gonna go for the smash. If they're losing 40-0, they're gonna play uber duper safe. This is wrong. Your tactic should be based on the, your skills and the skills of your opponent and the weaknesses of your opponent or your own weaknesses. And this is also a reason why you are tense, why you're maybe losing the match and why you are playing terrible, because you make your decisions based on fear, maybe. And this is gonna make it more complicated. If you are with me on the court and you say, Sven, I don't care what you do, but just play the ball over the net, I'm gonna play my worst paddle ever that you have seen in your entire existence. If you say, Sven, your first smash is going to go straight to his foot and break his ankle with your smash, I'm gonna play the best smash you've ever seen because I have a focus point and this is also what we say on the court, because uh, we have to laugh, you, have to <laughs> you need a target, uh, and then you play well. So always play your game plan based on your opponents and not on the score. Tip number 12, play with your own cards. This is, might be a strange thing that I'm saying, but imagine you're playing poker and you have your hand here. You can only play with the cards you have. You cannot play with the cards you don't have. Yeah, what I mean by that is that some players, when they're playing the match, they're playing a card that they don't have. They're playing a smash, which they don't have. They have a good forehand folly and they have a good return. So those are the shots that you have in your hand and those are the ones that you're going to learn and to play. Maybe you normally have an amazing smash, but you draw the cards from the deck and a good smash is not one of your cards. So you don't play with a good smash today. Okay, we're going to accept the fact that you don't have a good smash today, so we're going to play more of a Vibora or a Bandeja or a soft smash to the fence, a softer one or a Gancho. You're not gonna play shots that are not going well today. So every time, because there's more wind or the opponents play better lobs, you have a different set of cards and you have to own 
the cards, you have to know what today is good and what tomorrow is not, or the other way around. So also say to your partner, maybe your smash normally is amazing. Today, everybody starts crying when you play the smash, so it's gonna be better to play more bandejas. Tip number 13, focus on the other side. So when you're losing, maybe you're too much here instead of there. And you don't see that your opponent might have a bad back end or that your opponent is, not, is playing better than normally or he has uh, a lot of luck when playing. If, you're st if you start losing, you don't want to be here, you want to be there. So always look more to the other side. That will help you a lot because that brings you back to your tactic, that brings you back to the focus. The more you are here, the less likely it will be that you hit the ball correctly, that you move correctly. If, I th if I'm here, I stop moving. And if I stop moving and I'm not the best mover, it's not gonna be nice. So I need to be here on the other side, on the other side of the court, to watch my opponent, what he's doing, where they are moving, and then I play my best paddle. So try to be, when you are here, try to be more there. Tip number 14, um, and this is controversial. The last resort you have, play anti-paddle. So if you're losing, you can do something that is not nice, and that's like playing extremely high lobs, playing the ball so soft, so high, that your opponent has to think and they might get upset and the match can change. So if you're playing outdoor and they are playing amazing, go for the high lob, maybe go to the net, do something different. If you play like very high lobs, there is nothing they can do with it. Um, only do this as last resort, just to change everything that is on the court. <laughs> out, shit. If this is any help, it would be so nice if you can like the video, if you can subscribe to the YouTube channel because we want at least 60,000 subscribers at the end of the year. So that would be amazing. Thank you all for watching. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.